and welcome to the main cave. Now in today's video, I've got this. Now this is the Sofa Baton Universal Remote that I've been using in the main cave for the past few weeks. This is a really good alternative to say something like the Logitech. And in this video, I'll go through what I really like about this one. This is the model, the U2, and I will be starting with the price because for your money, you get a lot of controller. So if you're new here, we make regular videos on gaming and technology for your smart home. So please do consider subscribing as we may make a video to make your life easier. And I wouldn't want you to miss out. So please do hit subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. So as I said, this is the Sofa Baton Universal Remote and it's the U2 version. There is a much more expensive X1 version, which has more features and at some point I may upgrade to that. But for me, this will do for now. You can pick the U2 up for around $50, which puts it in the cheap end of Universal Remotes. And for your cash, you get a pretty well spec remote. The X1, however, is upward of $230. And as I said, maybe I'll get that at some point. So in terms of features then, its main selling point is the fact that it can control Bluetooth as well as IR devices. And with Bluetooth, it can connect to your phone with an app, which I'll talk about later. So the unboxing is pretty unremarkable. It's literally the remote, batteries, and a limited manual pamphlet. That's it. When you take it out, it feels good quality. It has a nice glossy top with a matte finish underneath. The buttons are all hard rubber and feel very satisfying to click, giving sensory and audible feedback. Small things you'll notice is that the buttons are all nicely spaced out, meaning it isn't difficult to get to the one you want just by touch alone, and you won't be pressing any accidentally. The usual array of buttons is there, including a large scroll wheel at the top for selecting which device to use. It's nicely weighted to around one third of the device weight to the rear, meaning it sits in the hand nicely without being too weighty up top. And there are three grips on the rear, which help with it holding, so no complaints with comfort at all. So once out, you want to start pairing it with your device, and I wanted to do this with my LG C1 TV, and I went about downloading the app. Now, once I'd loaded, you can start adding a device, and as you can see, it's pretty basic, nothing fancy, just search for your TV, name it, add an icon, and you're done. So in my scenario, I added my LG TV, but here's where I ran into another problem. My specific model of TV wasn't listed, so I had to use a generic LG setting. All well and good, until I found out that the device would register one click on the remote, as two clicks on screen. So I emailed Sofa Baton and a few emails back and forth, and within a couple of days they had added my specific model of TV, and now it works superb. Customer service from them was excellent, and I'm pleased that they fixed it only after a few emails explaining my problem. Also, one thing to note here is those with this feature, certain newer LG TVs, is that you won't get the floating cursor on the screen. It's all just clicks and points around the menu. Next, I added up my soundbar, the JBL Multibeam, and again, was relatively painless. Just search and add it, and this time, the model was listed, so no emails to Sofa Baton there. I also, as a test, paired the remote with my Sonos Ray, but seeing as there's no official remote for the Ray, it wasn't added on the database, so I had to learn the third party's remote functions. This again was a simple process, and I added the volume keys to work with the Sofa Baton by using the learning function in the app. Then once it's all set up, I got about using it and quickly found I didn't want to keep flicking back and forth between TV and soundbar just to control the volume. So back into the app and into my TV settings. And within here, you also have a load of other options to change the keys. So all I did was click the keys to change the volume and I set the volume to be on the soundbar and not on the TV. It works very well. Also in the app, you can set if you want the remote to wake up when you pick it up. You can set the screen brightness to one of three levels and the screen timeout. Again, it's pretty limited, but it's about as much as you'd need. Finally, you can set macros, which I haven't used as yet, but can imagine as being very handy for someone to set various devices to the way they want with just a button click. And then that's pretty much it for the app. As I said, it looks basic and has some decent functions and works well enough if you just follow the instructions. At the top of the remote is a small screen which serves the purpose of telling you what device you are currently using. As I said earlier, just to use a scroll wheel to select which one you want to use. For me, I only use it on a couple of devices, so rarely use this, but if you do have different systems, I can see this being useful. All the buttons work as they should and are signed correctly, such as menu, okay, back, etc, etc. I didn't really need to change many, apart from input select, which I prefer to bring up a list of the inputs there rather than input switching. So, just changed it in the app. 
The website claims it has a 35 foot IR reach, which I'm not in a place to test this exactly, but my room is along this around 15 feet and it worked perfectly. But being IR, it does have to have line of sight to work. I tested this hidden behind things and no, it really does need line of sight to work. If you want to know if this will work on the PS5, uh, well, it sort of does. But don't let this stop you. All you need to do in the PS5 settings is turn on HDMI link. And now you can control the PS5 using this remote or any remote really that does with the TV. But it's only in the menus, not in any games. So would I recommend this over say something like the Logitech? Well, I'd say that the Sofa Baton is a much more wallet friendly option. It suits my needs of controlling two or maybe three or even four items in the main cave, nothing more. And once I set up, I don't need to touch it. What more do I need? And for around $50, I can't argue, it does what it needs to. So yes, I would recommend this if you want to get a universal remote and don't want all the bells and whistles that come with an app say as the Logitech provides. Remember this remote is IR and not RF. There is an RF version on the sofa button, but I don't need that as yet. But if you do, then maybe look up the more expensive model. So that was my look at this in the sofa button U2. I hope this has been of use. Please like, please subscribe, and until the next video, bye-bye.